Hey guys, so I just finished setting up to do a new resin project. This time I'm using a resin that I've never tried before. It's called Craft Smart Resin. The only reason I got this brand was because it was the only one I found available at my closest Michaels. Uh, it was the only one I could see on their online store and we have to order online first before we pick it up. That's the only reason I got this one. I'm excited to try it, to get to know a new one. It's an epoxy resin that actually takes 72 hours to cure. So I'm gonna give it a shot today, maybe get a few layers done because it's meant to be worked in very thin layers. We're gonna try a bunch of different things, an array of things just to test this resin. It was kind of cheap, so I feel like I'm gonna have to be very careful with it to avoid any air bubbles and whatever other problems can come along the way, but let's figure this out together. I have all of my stuff set up. So I have these two, part A and part B, sitting in hot water so they can liquefy really good. And we're kind of going back to basics. These were the first molds that I ever purchased from the craft store to do resin with. Maybe make a few little simple ones. I just want to see the clarity and the air bubbles of this resin before we use it on something big. I've got my mask and my goggles here. First things first, I get my gloves and my goggles and my mask on, and then I get out all the materials I think I may want to use before I stir my resin together. And I make sure that the molds are completely clean. I like to just squirt a little bit of hand sanitizer on it and it, the alcohol cuts through the old resin really well and cleans the mold super fast. And then I bring up the warmed resin inside to mix equal parts by weight. So I put it on this scale and mix the part A and B. I only want to fill a few molds, so I only decide to do about 200 grams of this resin, I think. So the instructions for these two resin parts doesn't tell me to heat it up in water, but I do that for all my other resins and it's really helpful. Then it also says to stir this for a minimum of five minutes, which is a lot longer than most of my resins, or until it's clear. So I'm just gonna slowly stir, try not to create any air bubbles. This resin also suggests to work in quarter inch layers. We picked really thin molds anyways. Not too many air bubbles as far as I see. It's pretty clear and I've only been stirring for about two and a half minutes. I'm gonna start pouring. Since this resin had an extra long curing time, I figured I might have a little bit of extra working time. I know that when I heat up my resin in hot water, that cuts down the working time because you're already catalyzing the chemical reaction, so the resin's gonna start hardening faster. For this one, I poured a little bit of resin into all the molds I planned on using, and then I tried to work really quickly just in case this would happen. And even in this case, I was cutting it close. The resin started to gel up for sure before I was completely done with it, but I managed to use all the resin and add flowers to all the molds. I've definitely wasted resin in the past just from not being able to work fast enough.
sorry if there's a background noise. It might turn off soon, but I realized just after 24 hours that these molds are totally good to go. On the box of this resin, it said 72 hours, so I was totally expecting to wait the next night and then pour another layer on it because I'm like, I have to wait 72 hours for this to finish. Might as well like be like a thick, nice piece. But also, since they're completely done now, as far as I know, they feel really smooth, not tacky at all. I'm just gonna peel them out. At least try to. We can really tell by, by these ones, these really thin bookmarks to see how cured it is and how much more cured it will become by bending it. Let me just open this one up. Let me try the flexibility. It's pretty stiff already. Yeah, I don't think this is a very flexible brand. I don't want to play with it too much. Just got to sand it up and make it look nice. Here's the other bookmark. There was definitely a slope on the table that I was working on, which is why they turned out kind of like this, but that's all right. Let's get these ones out. Okay, so there's a madness to these ones, very similar to this. flower, fern, and leaf. This is so colorful. And then these little hands. This one I didn't finish. I might add more to it later. I just had a little bit of extra resin, but some poured over, so let's just pull them all out at once. So satisfying. turned out so shiny. I love these ones. This one with the little mushrooms in the thumb. So cute. So there's a lot of sanding to do, but I'm really happy with how they all turned out. The clarity in this resin is really nice. Very few air bubbles. And I feel like if I paid a little bit more attention, I could have picked some more of those out. Using my pliers I found was a really easy way to snap off all the excess resin. But while I was doing this, I encountered something that I've never seen before. But the layer of a resin top coat that I added to some of these pieces peeled right off, which I found really interesting. But I would have to figure out a different way to top coat these pieces. Typically, with all my other resins, it's been no issue, but this was kind of interesting and maybe has something to do with how long I waited for this top coat to cure before I started manipulating these pieces again. I used my Dremel to sand down the edges of the bookmarks and the pendants. This resin is a lot harder than most of the resin I use. It has more of a crack when you break it instead of bending. And when I hold this resin, it feels a little bit lower quality than what I usually work with. There's a lightness to it and kind of a general lower quality, which makes sense because this resin was a little bit cheaper. This one is the one that I peeled the top layer off. You can see that. I still think it's a really pretty piece in there. So I'm going to try to save it with something different. Mod Podge Gloss. So this dries super 
super shiny and clear, allegedly. When I snap, this will be glossy and clear. It turned out so clear. That's really impressive. Just as clear as the other ones, if not better and shinier. Cool. And I'm going to include links to all the materials and tools I use in this video and on my resin projects in the description below so you can check those out if you feel like it. I don't think the Craftsmart brand is really known for resin, but I thought this turned out pretty good. Not too many micro air bubbles appeared. It has a great clarity and shine. It definitely has its little quirks, but I've learned a little bit from this project. I think I'll try it on a few more things in the future, at least until I use this batch up. So thanks for watching me try out this new resin and I would totally appreciate a subscribe and a like on this video. Have a good one.